Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'm gonna blow your mind in regards to musical scales. In our Western culture, we tend to uh, view scales as fixed things, okay? A fixed set of notes with fixed intervals between them, you know, jumps between the notes, the distances between the notes. Um, while that is not entirely true in a purely musical sense, because uh, if you look at music, um, you know, pre-1950s, um, you'll see that scales were pretty malleable. Um, it was a lot more jazzy than the modern sound. The modern sound has one scale per composition, uh, per song, let's say, while in older days it was a scale per chord. Each chord has its own scale. And um, that's a more natural way to go about it. But that's not my point. Wait, I'm getting to it. Um, my point is that if you look at Eastern cultures, then uh, you'll see that the scales actually change mid-phrase. In Greek music, you change between the different modes almost continuously. In um, Arabic music, you change between modes continuously within, within one phrase. And in Indian music, there are no rules. At least it sounds like that to our ears. You can, you can hear in one Indian music phrase, you can hear a major line, a minor line, a pentatonic line, an Arabic line, all tied together beautifully. And I am going to explain to you how that works and why that is and why our conception of scales as a fixed thing is completely wrong musically. Um, and this is why most of our music tends to sound exactly the same. Okay? Um, even in different genres, we tend to get the same result. You, you have a sound you know, associated with the genre, but basically it's all major and minor all the time. Um, and even the modes are based around major and minor. <clears throat> so let's look at the major scale, okay? Hey, what's going on here? We have this. And then we have exactly the same idea here. Okay? It's two frets, two frets, one fret. And then we have the same thing. Two frets, two frets, one fret. Symmetry, right? Okay? I say that if you divide it in half and just look at this as an entity, let's call it a makam, like we they call it in uh, Arabic music. I said we, uh, like they call it in Arabic music. Okay, this is one makam, and this is a different makam, the same characteristic, but a different one. Okay, so we have two halves, okay? And I claim that you can move any note you like inside those halves, okay? If, for example, you do, okay, the minor equivalent, instead of, okay, instead of 0, 2, 4, 5, and you do 0, 2, 3, 5, and you continue the second macam the same way, okay, you get a certain sort of scale, okay? It doesn't matter which. It doesn't matter how you name it, a melodic minor. It doesn't matter. And if you do the same thing, here, okay. okay, you get another sort of scale, okay, from two separate macabre. And if you take the, the two to one, you get this, okay? Some of you now watch this and say, oh, the freeing. 
Yeah, it's the free in mode, but I'm not referring to it as a free in. I'm just moving a note. And then I can complete it with the previous macam. And now, in Western eyes, I'm playing a very complicated mode, but what I'm basically playing are two macams together, which create a certain sound. Okay, let's play the same one. Zero, one, four, five. Okay, now I move the three as well, back to four. And let's play the same shape. And these are two separate macams, but they build a really interesting scale. Now let's do this with one of the previous macams. Okay? And we have, we have a harmonic minor scale. Okay? This was the major. This is harmonic minor. Okay, so if you look at it like this, you can actually do anything. And it's very important to know this because music begins with the mind. Music begins with concepts. And if your concept is that a scale is a full-fledged thing and you can't change it or you can just change one note, then you can't come up with these sounds. And if you continue exploring it around the neck, you come up with interesting chords as well. Connections between different notes inside the macam. Okay, and let's try, let's try it. Okay, you get the harmonic minor. If you, you go for the major. You get a major scale with this. Now, I know this is a mode. But I'm not talking about the, the theory. I'm talking about the way you look at your collections of notes. You can look at it as collections of four notes. You don't have to look at it as collections of seven. Okay? Or eight if you have the bebop scale, for example. You don't have to do, you don't have to do the, the, the chromatics. You can add chromatics to it, but I'm trying to show you colors. Um, yeah, let's take this and do the same thing here. Yeah, and together, and now to go real crazy, let's try to go Indian and try everything together. It sounds completely foreign to our ears, but if you try to transcribe Bollywood music, for example, you'll see that this is exactly what's going on. It's all how you frame it. It's all how you frame the music and your conceptualization of the music. So um, I really, really hope that I was clear enough with my intentions and what I was trying to show you. Um, if you really, really want to go in depth with this, try to transcribe Indian music, just the melodies, okay? Most of the time, uh, it's over one chord, okay? Uh, just a one chord vamp. Uh, I've seen and heard um, eight minute long songs, uh, Bollywood songs that I had uh, people commissioned to transcribe. And the whole song was around E major. <laughs> And the solo just changed, the, the melody just changed uh, the lyrics, the, the lyric melody, I don't mean a guitar solo, I made a guitar solo out of it, but the lyrics changed between major, minor, um, pentatonic, the, the Arabic sounding things. Um, I'll try to show you what I mean, don't know if I'll, if I'll succeed. See, um, I tried to do 
all sorts of scale together, to scale types together, all sorts of makams, I like to call it. I like to refer it as makams because it's very, very comfortable uh, and convenient to look at it as four collections of four notes. So you saw, the moment I added a harmony to it, it started working. And that kind of proves my point uh, because during this lesson, I primed my ears to hear it and then I was able to do it. And you can do the same thing if you try. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.